Sam from Tool Hut here today. Today we're doing something a little different. I wanted to go through a couple of things that I learned on a vehicle that was giving me trouble after analyzing the crank sensor uh, capture that I had that I had gotten with my Pico scope. So this should apply to just about any scope. Um, it might be a little difficult to do on something other than a Pico. I'm not real sure. Uh, but stand by, I'll show you what I learned. Okay, so the first thing you gotta do is you have to get the file open that you wanted to look at. So you can see I've got some stuff uh, on this on this screen other than what I wanted to look at. So this is a vehicle that was giving me some trouble. So you'll notice that the injector current is on the blue trace. Uh, I don't really want that, so I'm just gonna get it out of my way. Maybe I can't turn it off. Oops, we're on a channel B, so let's turn channel B back on. So this is the channel I'm really interested in, because I know what the problem was with this car, but now that I have fixed it, I wanted to figure out how I could determine with the scope what the problem was. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our magnifying glass here. Now let's remember the injector pattern was pretty good over here so uh, we can always turn the injector current back on we don't really need the other stuff so we can see that our injector current is good here so let's look at something over here so let's start over here so I have shown this tip in a previous video um, but after I started looking at things wanted to show you something so we're gonna go up here to measurements we're gonna add a measurement we're gonna measure channel B because that's our crank sensor and then we're gonna do the falling edge count this is the where the crank sensor is pulled back down to ground this is a pull-up type style sensor so the falling edge or the rising edge should give us uh, comparable numbers I want to play with it between the rulers because I know how many pulses the crank sensor is supposed to have between the pulses. So it should be 58. But let's start right here. So let's grab, see this open gap here? And it shows 58. Now, something that's pretty cool is it will keep track of it for you. So let's just move on down the line here. So that one's 58. All right, so pretty good chance that it's 58. So here's where the injector current starts going a little crazy. So let's look at something. Uh, so let's grab the capture here. shows that's 58 so let's go to the next capture that one shows 58 that one shows 59 now wait a minute how come it's showing 59 so let's scroll on down through here and see because that's when it really occurred was it 59 there's 58 again And you'll see that one's 59. I'm just kind of going down through these. Because, like I say, I wanted to really analyze what could possibly be going on here. That one's 58. That one's 58. And 
I thought at first that maybe I had gotten my cursor messed up here, but we've done enough of these now. There's another one, 59, and you can see the injector current starting to go a little crazy here. This one's 58. That one's 58. I know it seems monotonous, but like I say, I wanted to analyze this sensor and really see what was going on with it. Let's do this. Let's go over here where it's really, really messing up for us. That one's 58. That one's 58. That one's 60. So, did I mess something up with my cursors? I don't think so. That one's 58. 58. There's another 60. Now remember that the engine computer doesn't have any tolerance for anomalies. There's 58. There's 58. So, let's try something here. So, in the where it's really screwing up here. Let's zoom in. Right, you know, just minimize this. We don't really need the overview, do we? So, I guess what I wanted to show you was that sometimes your due diligence will kind of teach you something. Uh, when you got some spare time looking at, at patterns. I, I had, Now, I want you to understand that I had analyzed this, the voltage. And I see that the voltage has got a little, little wave to it. I've also checked the the ground side of it, which was uh, 720 millivolts, which I was concerned with at first, but when I was done with the new pattern, it was the same thing, so. Okay, so let's do this. I apologize. It, we're using the cursors for the measurement instead, so. That one's 59, 58, 58. So you can see that most of them are 58, but the 59 and the 60s, that's where it's confusing the, the computer. So Let's dive into this one. This one's 59. Can we see what the what the anomaly is here? Let's go ahead and turn off the other channel just to get it out of our way here. So remember, we're we're doing the falling edge, which is going to be this edge here. So I don't see where it has double count. Oh, maybe this right here. That was probably, well, maybe not. 
there's another one here. So I counted one of them. This one looks a little higher than it. So I'm just trying to determine how it got 59. I'm obviously not going to count these. I'll never get across there without screwing something up. See the little wave in the in the crank center here. That one sees sixty. So after looking at this, I've kind of determined that I'm gonna have a new strategy when I'm looking at crank center uh, crank sensors that are giving me problems. So. Well, hopefully this helps somebody down the down the line. Thanks for watching. Sub subscribe to my channel if you want to see some more videos. I don't do a lot like this. It's mostly diagnostics and programming type videos, but I probably will do some more uh, tech tips or whatever you want to call them. Comments, thumbs up, thumbs down. Hit the bell if you want to be notified as I'm doing new videos. Have a great day.